Sewing with stretchy knit fabrics can be intimidating, but no need to worry. I will walk you through the basic steps and together we'll sew a simple project and build up your sewing skills and your sewing confidence. Hi everyone, it's Dr. Care, and today we are going to learn how to, how to sew with stretch knit fabrics. And we're going to start with a very simple project, very simple, plain, straight scarf. This is a great project to start with. It's something simple, two pieces of fabric, four different seams, turn it out, and then we'll do some decorative top stitching on top. Let's get started. To get started, we need two pieces of fabric. This, these are both a um, cotton lycra, really nice stretchy knit. It's a pretty decent weight. It's not very flimsy, doesn't get stuck into um, the feed dogs on my machine. And I love working with it. So we need two pieces, each the same dimensions. So we are going to go 11 inches high and you're going to go the width of the fabric. So the WOF is what you're going to see whenever you see any patterns that call for the width of fabric, WOF. And when you go through, you're going to look at the different types of stretch. Um, for me, the width of the fabric will always have an end seam. This is from how it was stored before it was cut and shipped to me. And remember, if you forget which side is the good side of the fabric, it will always curl towards the good side. Curls a little bit here, curls a little bit here. These are the ones that we want to use. We're going to be using our elastic thread again because it is a stretchy knit fabric. This is what I prefer to use. I have my scissors handy. I have my clips because you know I very rarely, if ever, use pins on my stretch knit fabrics. My nice little tool to help me. I am going to be using my sewing machine. We're not using a serger. You can use a serger if you want, but I'm not. And of course, I can't do any sewing without my drink of choice. So I do have my coffee here with me. Um, always in a travel mug to make sure I don't put any any cut threads or any clips into it. Let's get started. First step is actually going to be clipping the fabric together. So you're going to take, you're going to clip right sides together. Remember, it's curling towards the right side. And you're going to go through and put right sides together. I like to start by matching it up and clipping at the top. Helps keep everything nice and even. And don't worry, it does not have to be perfectly lined up. We're not looking for perfect. Nobody is perfect with their sewing. We want it nice and even as we possibly can to make it as simple as we can when we sew it together so that we don't have to play and mess and readjust the fabric too frequently. I hope you're having a good week. Did you do anything special? Make any good recipes? I was, haven't really done much cooking, more kind of reheating things, very simple kind of stir fries or um, broiled burgers or even rotisserie chickens. Kept it nice and simple this week. It's been a busy week. And we clip as we go. We'll do the other side. Um, up one side, then down the other. Sometimes I will hang the top of it off a pants hanger and have that, especially if I'm making a group of them for 
my Etsy shop, what I'll do is hang them from the pants hanger and let gravity do the work. Um, sometimes it works if it's a very thin, thin knit fabric, it um, will start curling a little bit too much. And you keep going on until you get to the edge. Take your time, don't rush, have fun with the fabric. I love, I love touching fabric. I was in um, one of my favorite fabric stores yesterday and I was just walking up and down the aisle looking for, um, wanted a heavier gauge knit. I'm helping test a skirt pattern for knit fabrics and I needed to find something a little bit heavier. I didn't want something too flimsy for a muslin, which is a, um, a mock-up of a the first trial of a pattern to get your fittings right. And don't worry, I will soon make a, a video to show you how to take measurements and do all that fun stuff because it is so much fun making your own clothes. It really is. You can just make everything completely custom and um, not have to worry. And for me, it's just fun. It's fun. I, I love when somebody compliments it and I get to say, I made that. It makes you smile. Um, I did some alterations on a a shirt that I did for my nephew yesterday. Um, I make shirts for my family for Christmas. I take all year to pick out wonderful fabrics for each of them that I believe kind of matches things that they're interested in and would make them happy and smile. And my nephew is nearing the end of high school, but he is over six foot five feet tall. And so he needs tall clothes. Now you can find tall, but a lot of the tall are big and tall. And he's not, not very big, just has the height, doesn't have the width to him. So I think he likes when I make make him his wearable hugs for Christmas because it's a him size shirt that just makes him feel good. I believe it's the same thing for my brother-in-law too. Still just clipping away. Now we're going to use two different types of stitches with this project. We're going to be using our stretch stitch, zigzag stitch, or the lightning bolt stitch, which is one of my favorite for knit fabric. And then when we finish the top stitching, we're going to be doing a straight stitch. So before we do that, Once I get my machine turned on, we're going to just check the settings on it of our machine. We want to make sure that we, we minimize as much puckering as we can. So we want to set the tension and we want to set the tension with scrap fabric. You don't want to do it with the good piece that you're going to be sewing. If you notice, it doesn't line correctly and that's okay. But this is all clipped and ready to go. But first, we're going to bring the machine in. Okay, here we are with my machine. And first, we're going to check the settings for the zigzag stitch or the lightning bolt, the stretch zigzag. So I'm going to push on my brother machine, that's number three. Um, I'm going to increase the stitch length and I'm going to increase the stitch width. I'm 
going to go a little bit deeper because this is a longer project. And when I'm practicing, I don't necessarily clip. Now, to show you here, I actually put contrasting thread in the bobbin and I left it with my black elastics thread on the top just so I can check the tension on my stitches. So that is all ready and I'm going to press and get started, do a couple of stitches. looking for is the integrity of the stitch. Is it puckering a little bit? Yes. A little bit through there. So I am going to adjust my tension. Um, so what I will do is actually, for my machine, it's up here. So I'm going to put it a little bit more in the middle. And then I'm going to go back and see, because I get a little bit of puckering. Um, and I just want to make sure that that is not going to warp my fabric. Now, it's nice and tight. It's not too loose that way. But I just want to make sure that I avoid the puckering. So I'll come back in. And then looking at the stitches again, this one seems a little bit better. I'm, I'm a little bit happier with it. I'm not seeing anything pull through too, too much. Um, what you're looking for is any of the white thread coming up um, and any of the black thread coming up. But these both look good, so I really didn't have to adjust too much. Um, I'm, I'm going to show you while I have my test fabric here. Let's try it with... I'm not throwing my scraps on the floor. I have a trash can underneath my sewing table. Let's go back and do our straight stitch. And the same type of thing. I'm going to line it up and start sewing. Just to give an idea of how it's going to look on the fabric. Make sure there's no puckering. Make sure that I like the stitch depth. So for me, I'm finding that this is a little bit too, too, um, too thin for the top stitching that I want to do. So I'm going to increase my stitch, um, length a little bit more and just see if I like that better. This way I know when it comes to the top stitching, how I like it. Okay. And that to me is a little bit better. I am happy with it. So when it comes time to the for the top stitching later on, I'm going to use a 3.5 and a 4.5. This way, when it comes time to the fun part, I don't have to sit there and play again. So now I'm going to take a minute. I'm going to remove the, um, the white bobbin. 
because I don't want the white thread on my finished product. It's going to go in here and I will re-thread it with my black thread. Um, re-thread if you, you notice that the top thread broke when I was coming through. So I'm going to re-thread that and then I'll be back. See you guys in a minute. Back and ready to start sewing. So my black thread is in the bottom. My black thread is loaded in the top. Both are the elastic stretch fabric. Um, my machine is set to the stretch zigzag stitch or lightning bolt stitch. For me on this project, I chose a stitch length of 4.0 and a stitch width of 2.5, but play with your scraps of fabric, scraps of fabric that you're using that in this project. This way you know exactly how it responds. And we're going to go for the quarter inch seam allowance. Press our foot down and we start sewing. I don't like to go too fast with the stretch zigzag stitch. I don't want to risk it breaking. I'm like nice and slow and steady. And honestly, I just like the rhythm and the sound of the machine. It's very relaxing to me. This would be a fun project to do for a um, for a holiday gift. Um, really good project for younger, newer sewers to do for gifts for either friends or loved ones. I mean, who doesn't need a scarf? I love them. It is a lot of fabric to, to work with, so this is a good project if you're starting to sew with knits and you're getting ready to make those bigger projects, things like shirts, things like dresses. Um, you get used to how to handle the fabric, how to drape it so that it works well for you. All of these, these lessons that I'm giving you they're helping you build upon each skill. Because I want to give you as much information and build up as much confidence to, to go in and work with any, any pattern that you want to do. pushing the fabric a little bit too quickly instead of just letting the machine pull it. You don't want to try to get ahead of it. You want to work with it. And if you notice, I just have my regular, regular foot with it. I'm not using walking foot, not using anything special on it. This is the original, original foot that, that I start with with this machine. Um, as far as needles, I'm just using an all-purpose needle. There are some people who are going to tell you to only use a ballpoint needle. I've tried them. 
I personally don't care for them. Um, for me, these are, are just what works well for me. So my needles are a, um, a chrome 116 needle. those back. Looks good. You notice because we took the time to pre-connect everything by clipping it. I'm not having to fuss with the fabric as much to line it up. I'm not having to guess. Everything's smooth and straight. I'm gonna continue sewing. You go ahead and continue sewing as well. Um, I'm gonna sew up the other long edge and then I'll come back to show you how I do the top to narrow edges. See you soon. And I'm back. So both long edges are sewed up with our stretch zigzag stitch. And now we need to trim the ends so that we can finish the sewing on the side. So I'm gonna take my cutting board because I'm not going to cut on my good table. And I'm not so exact, just want to line up one of the edges here to be as even as I can, but it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to snip it right about here. That seems to be perfect on this edge. Please remember if you are sewing with kids, do not let them use the rotary cutter unsupervised. So again, I'm also not throwing it on the floor. I have my trash can underneath. I'm going to remove my pins here, my clips, and we're going to go through and trim up this edge here. Same thing, line it up. And then I want to remove that little bit of the selvage edge. And don't worry that we're going over the beginning stages of these stitches. It's not going to come undone. They will get sewn up as we finish out the edge. Now we're going to go back to our machine and we are going to sew the narrow part. We're going to sew one side completely across. The other side we're going to leave about two inches does not have to be exact. That's where we're going to pull the fabric through so that we can turn our, our um, scarf right side out. So let's go back to our machine. Move my cutting mat out of the way. back to the machine same zigzag stitch we're not going to the to the straight stitch yet press our foot down and we're gonna go across you could take the same scarf cut it the same way sew the long edges and then you can turn it into an infinity scarf um, and I will do that on an ep another episode to show you how to finish that.
for right now, that doesn't involve the top stitching. And I want you to have the top stitching in your back pocket for when we get to sewing our first shirt together. You can trim your ends as you go if you want, or you can save it for, for later. Whatever makes you happy. And we're going to come back in and I leave my, my last two inches at the end. You can leave yours in the middle, um, in the beginning, wherever you feel most comfortable. And if you notice, I'm not back stitching to lock the stitch. Don't need to do that on this project until you get to, you know, actually you don't even need to do it when you, when you go to, so leave that edge. You can clip these if it makes you feel more comfortable. I just don't. Remember, it doesn't have to be completely exact. Right here. I'll lock the stitch. Trim up the loose threads, the end threads. machine back a little bit. Let's get ready to turn this out. So we're going to take that hole that we made. Remember it is stretch fabric. It'll fit. Now what you can do if you want, you can go to these edges. Don't go over where you clipped, where you sewed. Don't go into the corner, but you can just make a little bit of an angle. It'll make it little easier when we go to turn the corner out. Um, I'm not gonna, well, I'll do a little bit here. Not too much. Go into my trash bin. Now we'll go through and turn this out. It'll help the corners be a little bit more defined, a little bit easier to turn out. And here we are. You don't have to top stitch if you don't want to. Um, I just like the way it looks and because this is two fabric pieces of fabric together, no, just makes it easier. Some people will take their closed scissors and use that to gently push this in. I don't like doing that because I don't want to push through the seam that we made. So I'm going to take my little spoolie. Ah, where's my edge? Found my edge. And I'm going to go in. You can use your finger however you want. Some people keep a pair of chopsticks. And we're just going to go through and gently push the corner out. And it just helps you finish the corner. Same thing. Oh. And actually that one popped right the way that I wanted it. Sometimes I'll just play with my finger just to get it, give it a little massage to make that corner pop. Now we need to get ready to top stitch. Exciting, isn't it? 
Oh, I hope you're having fun with this. This is such a fun project for me. Now, sometimes what I'll do is I'll go back in and then just push out every seam to make it a little bit easier when we go to top stitch. So I'll come back in here, press it a little bit. You can iron it if you want. Just from my finger, just so that it doesn't bunch. And same thing on the other end. Presses it out all the seams. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Sorry. Don't want to make you motion sick. Now we're going to go back to our pins. So we need to finish this edge first. And what we're going to do is fold this in at a quarter of an inch. So that when we go to top stitch, this is going to finish this edge and close up the hole. I have, because I didn't back stitch there, it needs a little bit of help. And come back and take our clip. And the same thing. Close it up. and clip. Now, you can just go through and then freehand doing the top stitch, but I actually like to make it easier for the stitching so I can kind of get lost in the rhythm and finger press and clip finger press and clip and what i'm feeling for is actually that stitch that we did that that seam that seam allowance i actually like working it this way move my scissors out of the way for a minute And I'm going to go through and just adjust as I need to. And clip. Because if I just top stitch here, well then I'm losing some of it. I still want that depth to it. So I want to have all of that without stretching the seam too much and then finger press and clip See, I can see that I didn't get quite enough. Go. And you're going to go all the way around the scarf and clip all four edges. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I will be back and we'll go back to the machine together. Take your time. Don't rush. I know you want to get it done. There's the excitement to it, but don't rush. I'm back. 
everything is completely um, clipped up and we're ready to start doing the top stitching. I will see you back at the machine. We're back at the machine. Now I'm going to clip to hit the button for my straight stitch. And again, I want my stitch length of 4.5 and my width of 3.5. I'm going to take the end that I folded over first. That's where I wanted to start. Pull my threads to the back. I'm going to take my first, first one out. Now the first couple of stitches you might have to kind of adjust. I push the little button in because it is a higher, um, higher seam right there. And I'm going to go in a quarter of an inch. And sometimes I have to lift up on my presser foot until it starts pulling. And I'm just going to go straight down. I have a little less than a quarter inch. I'm actually using this line right here. I'm going to zoom in a little closer so you, you can see of my my presser foot as a guide. See how much easier it is since we we pre-clipped. Makes it so much easier, so much quicker for that final result. And you don't have to fumble and play with it as you go. Since you took the time. It's all about the prep work. If you take the time for the prep work, the end result goes so much smoother. And you learn how to work with the larger amount of fabric. Um, it teaches you patience, it really does. And just enjoy the sound of your machine because it is so relaxing. If I'm sewing for someone, um, especially if I'm doing, if I'm sewing up a wearable hug, I like to think about the person that I'm, I'm sewing for. Um, and by wearable hug, I actually mean any, any object that I sew as a gift for somebody. Um, so for Christmas, I sew wearable hugs, which are hoodies with, um, fabric that I custom picked out per person based on their, what they, they like to do, their hobbies, their interests, favorite colors. Um, it just, something special. I, I took that time and I came up with the term wearable hug during the pandemic. There was that first Christmas during the pandemic where we couldn't be together. And at that point, I was sewing mainly because, you know, as a healthcare worker, I needed um, face masks. So did my, my patients, and they were nowhere to be found. And I started playing with the knit fabrics to make neck gaiters and different things to make it easier. Um, and I made the first wearable hug. And since we couldn't be together, people couldn't couldn't be near one another. We couldn't hug. People were coming up with different unique ways of being able to give hugs. I don't know if people remember seeing the, 
the plastic doorways that had the arms where people would be able to hug that way. Um, I thought the, the custom shirt was a way of me sewing my love, sewing a hug in for them to let them know that I thought about them. Um, and now that's been a tradition every Christmas for me to the people that mean the most to me. So I've already, I have my list. I'm checking it more than twice. <laughs> and I've purchased fabric so far um, for three of the, I have a list of 13 that I, I make hugs for. Um, so three picked out already. I already purchased, I, there's a whole world of custom fabric on Facebook. And that led to a lot of different interests in finding very unique things I've done. Um, one of the, the people that I sew for does photography, so found one with cameras or found one with film on it. Um, my nephew loves, his favorite colors are black, red, and gray. Um, so I was trying to make sure that his is red. Some form. I did a really nice plaid one. Um, not a, a gingham check. It was just a very classy plaid. Not this past Christmas, but the year before. Um, it's always hard. I, I love to <laughs> pick out the fabric for my sister. But the problem is I always want to show it to her. And I know I can't do that because I don't want to ruin the surprise. But I think she she likes the ones that I pick out for her. Oh, she does. Um, and then on top of that, for, for Christmas, I started doing one matching shirt for my sister and I. Actually, this started that year, that first pandemic Christmas as well, um, where she and I match. And I did that this past year for not only for Christmas Day, but also we were going to a craft show, um, one of the largest on the East Coast. And <laughs> so I made matching matching hoodies for us with that. And um, we got a couple of compliments on it. It was fun. Actually, we got, got a couple of compliments on a few of them that, that I did. So I'll start looking for, in June or July, the Christmas fabric will actually, and the, the custom fabric on Facebook World, um, the Christmas fabrics will be start coming out because it does take some weeks, anywhere from between 8 to 12 weeks to, um, to get that ordered and then... And I'm almost done. It actually takes less time to do the top stitching, especially after after clipping it compared to the compared to the initial zigzag stitch. Forget if you you make this, tag me on Instagram, tag me on Facebook at Dr. Care Cares. I would love to see what fabrics you choose. Love to see the the finished project and cheer you on on your sewing journey. And here we have our finished scarf. You did it, guys. I'm so proud of you. I hope you enjoyed this project. And like I said, if you want to share it with me, I would love to see it. Tag me on Instagram. 
tag me on Facebook at Dr. Care Cares, and don't forget to subscribe so that we can sew again together next time. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.